When initially approached by Cricket Australia to make this film, my immediate thoughts took me back to childhood and my first Ashes memory, which took place right here at the MCG. It was just pure theatre, and the emotion of the Ashes had me for life. It's about passion, rivalry, and the relationships on and off the field. You will hear raw and unique insight into four of the greatest series in history. 1974 5, 1981, 89, and 2005. Told directly from those closest to the action, the players. The angst over time between the aristocrats of England and the convicts of Australia, was that evident to you? Oh, look, it was a little bit, because I think it was sort of something that was passed on down through the generations of Australian cricket, to be fair. Right the way back and listening. I didn't play with AB, but I know that he carries that around a lot. Even though we're cut from the same cloth in some respects, England still feel like they rule Britannia. <laughs> They think we are lesser, we're convicts, to put it blankly. They are regal, they are royal, and we are subservient. The great divide, the supposed divide of the privileged English and the underprivileged Australians sent 12,000 miles away to forge a future for themselves. These are reprobates uh, from England. Uh, they've done all sorts of ne'er-do-wells, uh, you know, bad lads. They uh, will send them to Australia. Well, they never thought that through for a start. There's a million places they could have sent them to instead of Australia. We, we want to go there. <laughs> Get great delight in reminding the Aussies that we sent them down here. Beefy still carries on with that shit. I always had that air about them that they just strutted around like they invented the game, and they did invent most games. The trouble is they're not very good at winning at most. We had the chains around our ankles with the convicts, and they like to remind you of that all the time. The Aussies don't seem to be able to take the fact that you basically ask. It can be very funny but I think deep down they really mean it. I love Australia. It's just ruined by those people that live there. There's always that, but you're a pom, yeah, and you're a convict. The English love using that word. It's probably why I like using the word pom. Which the Australians have got wrong, by the way, because pom stands for prisoner of Mother England. No, I think it's actually the other way around. We kind of run your place. We own it. We don't like them, so they don't like us. <laughs> Play on. Yeah. Tomo was the one who used to say, ah, oh, those bastards, they think they're better than us. It's that kind of chip on the shoulder thing. The Ashes goes deeper than just on a superficial sporting level. But we probably got a lot to answer for, the English. <laughs> <laughs> My background's Scottish, so we always hated the bastards anyway. <laughs> Burn 
earning of a trophy. I might be wrong. No, that's wrong. Did you burn the bales or something? Is that it? I shouldn't know that. I thought I played them a bit. I think, is that it? Well, allegedly, it's to do with the bale being burnt by the players' wives. And now, how true that is, I mean, there's still this room about what actually is in that urn. Why did they burn the bales? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Why did they burn the bales? Oh, that's, a, that's an intriguing one. My understanding is some bits of wood being burnt. <laughs> yeah, that's, about, that's it. Well, look, it's, it's more, I think it started years ago, but I'm not too sure why they burn them. And I'm a cricketing lover, and I've got no idea. How did cricket end up with this uh, little urn with apparently some cremated bales in there? They're trying to work out whether it was actually uh, the ashes of stumps or, or something else that, that, that were in there. It's probably made up some of it, <laughs> poetic license. Will you try and tell me there's no, they didn't burn the stone? That's okay. I'm not going to believe you. La 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 la. Oh, I'm a believer. I, I haven't even thought, I haven't even questioned that. I don't want to. Why not? It's a great story. Well, to tell the story of the Ashes Urn, we have to go back to the summer of 1882. An Australian team defeated an English team in England for the first time. This was a, a real shock to the system. So much so that a few days later, a spoof obituary was placed in the Sporting Times newspaper declaring the death of English cricket, and that the body would be cremated and the ashes taken to Australia. There was an English team going out to Australia that winter, captained by the Honourable Ivo Bly, and he declared he was going out to Australia to regain the ashes of English cricket. But before the first test match was even played, they visited Rupert's Wood House in Sunbury, Victoria, which was the home of Sir William and Lady Janet Clark. There, on Christmas Eve, Ivo's team played a scratch match against some of the estate workers, which they, of course, won. Now, Lady Janet was renowned as a bit of a humorist, and legend has it that she went upstairs at the end of the game, took what was probably a perfume jar or a cosmetic jar from her dressing table, burned a bale that was used in the match, placed the ashes in the urn and presented it to Ivo as the ashes of English cricket. The urn has become associated with the, the myth, the legend of the ashes that we know today. You go and look at it in Lords, and it creates those emotions. And I still get goosebumps and the hairs on the back of your neck go up. And that, to me, even now, still gets me. It's a lovely story, really, isn't it? And it could have happened. There's a little one upstairs. I treasure it, yeah. I look at it just about every time I go in there. I, I have a little touch of it, yeah. You look at this and you're looking at it thinking, wow, where has this been? What has this done? The history and the people that have picked this up is just amazing to think. You feel that something for so, that means so much uh, to two nations uh, should be far bigger and more impressive. But it's a symbol, and it's a strong symbol. I defy anyone in any other sport to come up with a trophy that has more historical significance than that little urn. And it's Underwood bowling to Chapel, who plays a beautiful shot. This could be four. For me, the Ashes came alive with a little wireless radio under my pillow at an English boarding school. I wasn't allowed it, so I smuggled it. And then I turned it on after the lights had been turned out in the dormitory. And it was specifically John Snow and Geoffrey Boycott in Australia in 7071 under Raymond Illingworth.